most of the research on, on the health effects of nicotine is confounded by smoking, which is obviously, obviously not good for you. But interestingly, there does seem to be an inverse relationship between nicotine use, even via smoking, and Parkinsonism. So people who smoke cigarettes seem to be protected to some degree against Parkinson's disease, hmm. which is very odd. And they've shown in mouse models that nicotine actually, when they use some of these mitochondrial toxins, some of these poisons like Paraquat, right, or another one called MPTP, which is, has been used as a, as a street party drug, but it's actually profoundly neurotoxic. It, it's been shown to create chronic Parkinsonism with just acute use. Nicotine actually prevents that in those models. So it's been shown to somehow protect the brain from, in, in, some, in some regards, um, against Parkin, Parkinson's disease. So I wouldn't recommend using nicotine unless somebody, and this is again a speculation, but my, my hypothesis is that if you, were, if you were exposed occupationally to some of these compounds like Paraquat or Rotenone or um, there, are, there are other compounds that are being directly connected to Parkinson's disease too, like trichloroethylene, I would say maybe nicotine is a, is a potentially disease-modifying intervention in those contexts. So in these, uh, when they've studied patients the, was there a small, like a noticeably smaller instance of people who develop Parkinson's who were smokers, or was it non-existent? Like, they're they're just. I'm not sure the the relative risk um, decrease, but it's one of these odd things that seems pretty consistent in the literature that smokers are less likely to develop Parkinson's disease. By they're, what factor? I'm not sure. I'm not sure the factor, but it's significant. It's significant. Hmm. But smoke, but smokers are more likely to develop a whole host of other. Oh yeah, it's terrible you know. for you. Yeah, but that's the interesting thing is that nicotine. It's thought that nicotine protects this one region of the brain have in, a, they in looked, a significant way. I'm sorry, have they looked at people that are in taking nicotine in different ways, like cigars, uh, gum patches, things along those lines? Not a lot of the a lot of the research on nicotine is in animal models, unfortunately. Um, but it is, I mean, it does seem to do, if you set the vascular effects aside, which might play a role, um, in neurodegeneration because, you know, the brain relies on its vascular network. The brain, you know, is a, is a very hungry organ and vascular dementia is the second most common form of dementia actually. But nicotine does seem to have some really protective effects on the brain. It seems to reduce neuroinflammation. Um, it might act in a way as an antioxidant in the brain. I'm not recommending it because there are risks, of course, but um, but they've shown that it seems to be protective in these animal models against con uh, against these poisons that would otherwise cause Parkinsonism. And some other cool facts about nicotine, actually, because I did do a little bit of a deep dive recently into it, because because I do notice a, a cognitive benefit when I when I use it. Nicotine. How do you use it? I just use it, I, uh, I use it like before. But what, in what form? A lozenge, like a little like, you know, lozenge. Um, and, uh, and I don't have an addictive personality. So for me, I'm not like, you know, it's not something that I feel compelled to do every day. But I do it uh, before, like I have to go on like a TV show or do a big podcast or something. And, um, and I do see, you know, I do definitely see like a, a cognitive bit, like, a, you know, it's a stimulant. That's, um, mm -hmm. that's pretty well known. But, um, but yeah, nicotine also, it has a very short half-life. So its half-life is only about two hours. I mean, you compare that to coffee. Coffee's is like eight hours. So it's, it's relatively transient in your system. But then I think the more interesting compound is, uh, is its primary metabolite, which is called cotinine, which it's, cotinine's half-life is 20 hours long. And it seems to also boost cognitive function, mental health, insofar as animal models can show us that these compounds boost mental health, um, might even enhance what's called fear extinction. So for people with PTSD, it might play a role. So it's a, it's a really interesting compound, but, you know, again, it's, it's highly addictive and, um, what is cotinine? It's nicotine's primary metabolite in the body. So when you ingest nicotine, Nicotine lasts in the body only about, the half-life is two hours, so it lasts presumably about four hours. Um, but it converts to this compound called, called cotinine in the body. And the half-life of that compound 
is about 20 hours. So it's in your system for a long time. And, and, people, and that compound doesn't have any of the negative side effects of nicotine. It just seems to do all these interesting, cool... So know. it has all the positives and none of the negatives? It seems to. I mean, it's not a stimulant. Short and long-term effects of... Oh, that's codeine, bro. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, C-O-T... Yeah, I was trying to spell it, and it <laughs> me, and I fell down the path. Different so compound. Like, Whoa, look at that. <laughs> yeah, that stuff will fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> that's in cough syrup. Um, yeah. Cotinine. Yeah. How do you spell it? C-O-T-I-N-I-N-E, I believe. Yeah, it's super interesting stuff. And do people take this as a supplement? No, but it, your body readily will create it from... I don't know if it... It, it, it doesn't have the... Um, Cotinine. Yeah, there we go. Produced by the body after exposure to nicotine, the main metabolite of nicotine. 70-80% of nicotine is converted to cotinine. Cotinine is often used as a biomarker for exposure to tobacco smoke. It can be detected in urine. Okay. Cotinine can remain in the body a day or more. Nicotine disappears within a few hours. Yeah, but you can Google like cotinine fear extinction or cotinine um, Which cognition. Which is probably why people will say that cigarettes relax them. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's an anxiolytic. It reduces anxiety. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. See, I mean, it, it does seem to be this, it's like this really interesting compound where it, it does all these, you know, it has all these effects in the body that many of which I'm sure are negative, but it does seem to do some good stuff for the brain, which is fascinating, you know? Mm. Um, so I, th I think, um, again, I'm not promoting it, but if you're able to forge as an adult a responsible relationship with it, you know, then maybe it's worth experimenting with if, you know, particularly because of its, you know, its, its potential to, I don't want this to come off as an endorsement for nicotine, but its ability potentially to protect against Parkinsonism is very, is very interesting.